Welcome back to the show, everyone. You may have heard of uh, the six-string guitar, the six-string nation. Well, for good reason. And now there's a book that you can flip through and get all the history of this great piece of art and Canadiana. Oh, and there are some amazing stories, including Don Cherry's pants in here. Uh, we're joined now by the author, Joey Taylor. How are you, Joey? Good, how are you? Of course, that's the first thing we talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's pants. pants. Oh, my, first is that where this all, is going? we got to talk about the, uh, this idea yeah. for this. What was the impetus of this for you? Uh, well, it's, it's a long story, really, but, you know, in 1995, uh, when the October referendum in Quebec was in the offing, um, as much as I kind of sympathize with uh, Quebec's sense of uh, confidence and pride uh, to move forward, I also understood everybody who, you know, went and stood in the streets of Montreal and said, don't go. Yeah. But in all of that debate, it all boiled down on that night to red versus blue, French versus English, Quebec City versus Ottawa. And that didn't capture my Canada, and I would imagine that for someone in suburban Calgary, it didn't capture their Canada, and for someone in Igloo Lake, it didn't capture their Canada, or for a, a newcomer, it didn't capture their Canada. Yeah. And we have all these amazing stories across this country, all these great communities, and uh, we kind of rely on too few symbols to say who we are. We got donuts, we got hockey. Yeah. We got the uh, moose. We got the moose, we got the, the loon, beaver, yeah. the mountie. Mountie. <laughs> the mountie. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just named them. And, and unfortunately, we keep going back to those. And they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Not yeah. at all, but, but it almost seems like it's a stereotype that we get bored of, and it's like, oh, there they are yeah. again. Well, and but it's a stereotype so much more. that we borrow from outside yeah. almost. You know, yeah. that's how other people define Canada. So we sort of so borrow from that to define ourselves. And it kind of makes sense since we don't have a really strong, um, you know, history you know, program. We don't really learn about ourselves in a compelling way in school. So this project was meant to kind of bring more voices in and say, this is all Canada. And there's all these great stories that, that become springboards to another way of looking at the country. And more importantly, for anyone who plays it then from any part of the country, it becomes theirs. It's I, their voice. I was going to ask whether it was a guitar right away. Was that the first thought? I'm going to build a oh, guitar? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I'm... Not a I'm, plaque? I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> Not a canoe. <laughs> well, it happened because, I mean, first of all, you know, when you think about people who define Canadian culture, the vast majority that will pop into your head are songwriters. Yeah. That's something yeah. we do really That's well. So true. Yeah. But it's also because I happened to meet George Rosani, the luthier who eventually did the build on this project, um, and he was really dedicated to using Canadian woods rather than the more familiar exotics, uh, Japanese maple, uh, yeah. African ebony, uh, you know, all that kind of so thing. So how many pieces is this uh, beauty uh, comprised of? There's 63 in the guitar itself. There's a 64th on the strap, which is a shoulder tile from the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry in Edmonton. And then there's these these buttes that you've earlier alluded yeah, to. Yeah, we have okay. to show Don, Don Cherry's pants. <laughs> yeah, Don's now, pants are in there. What else is in the How case? do you ask for Don Cherry's pants? How does that conversation unfold? Uh, well, you end With up talking to his daughter, uh, Cindy, and um, she talks to her dad, and he, he says, he says, well, I, of course, we asked for a jacket, right? And the funny part is we bumped into Pat Quinn for the old Leafs coach in Pearson Airport one day, and we're showing him all the hockey stuff in the guitar, and I said, y you know, can you help us out? We need to get to Don Cherry. We want one of his jackets. And Pat Quinn said, are you kidding? When Don sees that yellow stuff, he's going to want a suit made out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you, can do a, you can do a straight swap. Um, oh, that's funny. And then, but then, crazy enough, Don said, told his daughter, oh, you know, I can't really bear the thought of anyone cutting one of my jackets so they can have a pair of pants. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> the lesser of two evils. <laughs> now, we're Which is, you know. pictures from the book. Uh, mm. The first one here is one of our favorite people, Grant Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can explain. <laughs> He's just him. playing it, is what it comes down <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, that's how he dresses like that most days. Uh, but he well, should. See, well, part of the thing of getting the guitar out into the culture and uh, into people's hands um, is that we, uh, not only do musicians play it, but we encourage everyone to kind of, you know, get to know it, hang and, on and, it. and hang on to it a bit. So one of the ways we do that is through these portrait sessions that we do at festivals and schools and conferences and stuff. So this was actually at the Exclaim Cup in Toronto, and uh, Grant Lawrence and a bunch of other folks showed up. And uh, these are, we've now done 50,000 portraits of 8,000 different people from really? Dawson City to St. John's. Well, and that's yeah. a beautiful thing about this. I mean, because it encompasses so much Canadian history and, you know, these little mementos from all over the place uh, that have historical significance, and yet the first thing you did is hand it to us. 
And I have to say that surprised me a little bit, but that's what you do with people. You want them to, to feel it. I want them to feel it, and I want them to, to feel a little bit. I mean, the great thing about the photos is that it gives people that moment of ownership where mm -hmm. that's A nice theirs. kiss there from there a great artist. There from, from Sheila Miracle. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's that moment where people become themselves. You're in that sort of white space, and, and yeah. it's yours for a minute to reflect on whatever part of it you connect to. Captures okay, let's talk about uh, some more pieces. And maybe you can mm. just like take us on a little tour. And a little point tour, out some okay. Well, that here. right there, that's a seat from Massey Hall in Toronto. Um, this here is all Louis Riel's schoolhouse from Winnipeg. Wow. Uh, now the can Saint we talk Bonnets about the front, Museum. the Golden Spruce? Because yeah, this is a distinctly Canadian story. Um, this was the uh, completely albino Sitka spruce tree that grew to uh, 300 years old, 120 feet yeah. tall in Haida Gwaii. Uh, that was cut down in 1997 by a disgruntled logger slash environmentalist. And, yeah. um, you know, the Haida said that they would just leave that on the ground and, and let it return to the earth. Uh, I was very fortunate that uh, David Suzuki and the community in Old Masset and Skidigat and help from Gujao, the president of the Council of Haida Nations, eventually. We got there in February of 2006 and got the only piece ever taken from the tree, and that's, that's the whole time. Well, and it's a just, huge part of this guitar and, and different mementos are, are taken from, you know, the first communities that populated Canada, or what we know now as Canada, and that well, was a huge part of this. Well, and that's, yeah, it was, it was important to me because I feel like First Nations people often get uh, ignored in the yeah. history, so there's lots of uh, First Nations stories uh, the, the, uh, from the monuments, Almighty Voice from the One Arrow First Nation, and the... Uh, uh, Moose Antler from Pick River, First Nation, and Joe LeBobe's Oyster Knife from uh, Lennox Island, First Nation. But also, you know, Paul Henderson's stick from the 1972 Canada-Russia series. <laughs> now that's Canadian. You have a whole hockey section in there. There's four in one in that little... Well, that's uh, Paul Henderson's stick. There's a piece of the Wildcat Cafe from Yellowknife, yeah. uh, built in 1937, still operating today. Terrific meal, actually. Uh, <laughs> and a seat from the old Montreal Forum. Which is now the Forum Pepsi. Yeah, uh, and uh, one of Gretzky's sticks there. James <laughs> Naismith's house for a little basketball. Uh, and where is Pierre Trudeau's uh, paddle? Pierre Trudeau's canoe paddle is the tone bar right here. Beautiful. Wow. We've got a picture of it up there. How uh, did, you, did the uh, Justin give you that? Is that how you Justin, got that? Justin, I bumped into Justin and, and told him what I was looking for and was actually trying to work through the canoe museum in Peterborough, Ontario, but. It was bankrupt at the time and uh, padlocked, so you couldn't get at anything or talk to anyone. Yeah. And one day, Justin called and said, my brother and I were at the summer house, and we found one of Dad's favorite paddles. It's Would yours. You like it? Uh, it must have been quite an experience for you, uh, you know, sort of as the momentum built uh, with this, the kind of things that, that people were offering up, whether it's, you know, someone who is just has a profession that's very Canadian, whether it's First Nations community or whether it's like Maurice Richard and his <laughs> Stanley Cup bring his first, you know. Yeah, right there. Get out. Yeah, that's from Maurice's, uh, which, and that was actually commissioned by the family at the time. The, yeah. the, they didn't issue Stanley Cup rings, they issued platters. And I know, like, today you could wear one around your neck and get away right. with it, but, yeah, for uh, sure. but a ring at the time was, was more. Well, well uh, story. we are honored to have held it, and uh, we have a gentleman who's coming up next who's actually going to play it. Barney Ventel is going to be joining us right after Fantastic. the break. Isn't that great? That's great. He and is very excited for this. And of course, you can pick up the book, uh, A Great Way to Learn About Canadian History. Six String Nation is in bookstores right now. Thank you so much, Joey. Thanks yeah. for having me. Great job. So Appreciate we're going to take a really break, and when we return, we're going to chat to uh, Barney Ventel about his new album and he is going to be playing the guitar right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Our next guest uh, has a guest on his lap. Yeah, indeed. We <laughs> asked him to come in or whether he would come in today uh, and whether he'd be willing to play the six-string nation guitar. His answer was, yeah. <laughs> I sure will. Barney Bantel joining us. He's got a brand new CD out. It is called The Inside Passage and he's got the Grand Caribou Opry uh, November 27th at the Colts. How Cults. are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. Really good, Con thanks. Congratulations on the new record. Uh, maybe we should talk about that first because uh, you did it a little differently than you've done some of your past albums, right? Well, I, I, it was just um, recorded up in Ashcroft with my friend Johnny Ellis, which was great, great, great place to make a record. Recorded it fairly, fairly quickly and, uh, and uh, just had a blast doing it. Do you have to readjust record. expectations sort of every time? Because you've done a lot of albums now, you know. Do you, do you just sort of, do you let it go or do you try and go in with a plan or? A little bit of a plan, but it also be open to what, you know, what Whatever happens, of, happens. Yeah, absolutely. And 
I think that one thing I try to comprehend is in back in the day, I'll say that, you know, we were, when we were recording for Sony, the days of big recording budgets, I don't know how we took so long to make a record, <laughs> right. and how we yeah. spent so much money. <laughs> funny how much how it did really we burn through that changed. budget? Like it's changed yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah. Is it more fun now that you get to do it in a place that you want to do it? I mean, let's put the money aside for yeah, the big budgets. You get but to is, make it, the is it better for you as an artist to have, uh, have it on your own terms? Um, I think so. I mean, there was a point where there was a fair bit of pressure and, you know, um, a lot of input from record company management, et cetera. I'm sort of free from that, which, which is great, and just can go there and, and, and try and make the kind of music that I want to make and, and in different locations. But, I mean, we used to always do that. We, we made one of our records we made in House Sound on Keats Island, one we made in New Mexico, and this one up in Ashcroft. I kind of like being in different places. Find it easier when I'm away from home because I just love home. Just to get home. inspired. Uh, well, I, I love home. I, I think it's just easier for me to focus on the yeah. project. Yeah. There's day to day when you're at home. I mean, there is no matter day -day. if you say I'm making a record. Okay. I'm making a record. It's the I elephant that with my in wife. the room. We have to talk about the guitar. Of course, we just uh, found out about it with the book Six String Nation, uh, and you just got it in your hands. How does it yeah. feel to be holding that piece of Canadian history like oh, that? It feels great. I was, uh, as you mentioned, I was so thrilled when when asked to do this. Uh, because I've kept tabs and the whole thing, and it's just, it's it's a fascinating project, and I think it's in some ways it's a very Canadian project, or it strikes me that way. Not you know, not not just in terms of the wood and, and all the kind of iconic parts that are in it, but just that person like Joey would do it. Yeah, <laughs> I think and it's pass it around yeah. and play it and let everybody yeah. hold it, and yeah. it's not you know behind glass well, where people can't touch yes. it. And yeah. as I think about it too, I mean, as a singer songwriter, I think you probably travel this country and see different parts of this country more than 95% of the population. I mean, you've been traveling across Canada for most of your adult life. Yeah, I was, uh, it's funny, we were, you were asking, Fiona was asking about Dustin and I said he called me yesterday, he's on the road and he's just about to leave Winnipeg to dr drive to Toronto and I mean, sadly, I don't know if it's a good thing or it's a bad thing, you'd probably wake me up anywhere on the Trans-Canada Highway, and I have a pretty good idea where I was. <laughs> so, yeah, you get to see a lot of the country, and it's sort of an uncertified education that you get. He's out there doing it. You do get to travel, and it's it's a wonderful country, and, and so so many things that are mentioned and, and, and represented in this guitar, you know, you've been there, and you've been able to... What are you going to play on it today? Uh, I'm going to play... Um, I think I'm going to play a song called The Inside Passage, the, the title track. It's the last last song I wrote for the record. I knew I wanted to call this record the Inside Passage, and I I hadn't really done that before because it was a time when uh, time my my father was getting near the end of his life, but I was, I was also having grandchildren. There was this sort of these cross currents going, and and I I wanted it to sort of represent a, a, you know our passage or, or moving through life. Yeah. So it was la I, I kind of made the whole record, and then I happened to be in this coffee shop in Bragg Creek, Alberta. I mean, it's because it's a very West Coast song, as you'll yeah. see when I play it. But I was in this snowy day in this coffee shop in Bright Creek, Alberta, and the song kind of spilled out there. <laughs> that must be nice when that happens. The song just comes to you and just goes. <laughs> It, it, it really is. Okay. Uh, that's, that's never happened you can to almost, me. You can almost see the relief on your face when you talk about it. It's just like you start yeah. and you go. And oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you, I think you write and you work for those moments yeah. because um, it, it, it often doesn't happen. But I remember, I remember reading, I don't know if you've ever read On the Road by Jack Kerouac, yeah. but right. the whole description at the beginning where he says, really, it took two years to live the book, no yeah. writing, and then two weeks to write it. Yeah. Uh, and I think sometimes that might be what happens in this song, just that because I think I kept thinking about it and, and, and everything else I was writing for the record was sort of playing into that. So in a way it was at yeah. this moment where, okay. Just all came together. Well, maybe that's experience, right? Recognition that now's the time to write it and, and not, you know, five or six months ago when it was still rattling around your brain a little bit that you recognize now's the time to sit down and Sort yeah. of pour it out. I wish it was. I wish I knew when. <laughs> I, I wish I knew. I was trying to make you wise. <laughs> I know. I know, and I appreciate it. But it's like I got a song on the radio again now, and and and, and I, I just don't. It's it's sometimes it's the simplest things, and you tell yourself, okay, 
be simple, but it's it's hard to do. It's hard. Being it's simple mystery. is the most difficult yeah. thing. Well, we're going to hear the tune right now on this guitar. Uh, the Inside Passage is the name of the song and the album, which is out right now by, of course, Barney Bentall. Thanks so much, Barney. Well, thanks, thanks, Barney. For and you've me, got Gary. the Grand Caribou Opry. Uh, Opry. I always say it wrong. Uh, <laughs> who's playing Opry? <laughs> Sorry, Oprah. <laughs> who's who, who's playing with you? Well, I don't know who's going to be playing. It's November 27th. Yeah. It's always a mystery. I mean. Man, God, last year we had Adam Creek, the gold medal uh, yeah. winner. Uh, and then we've had Tom Wilson, Kathy Jones. We had Joel Plaskett in Ed Surrey played with us. Nice. I don't know, just whoever. We'll I, see, I start seeing, at a certain point, I start seeing who's Mike around. Mike and I'll come play for you. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Gary you can. awesome. Did you guys play anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Awesome. That's not necessarily and a good <laughs> 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 right, He's going to play for us right after. come up there first. and look good. That's he, all. Yeah. That, he can do that. Right after this, Barney's going to play a tune. Don't go away. As a kid, I would read of the brave explorers deep and making their way. At the end. Say the word. Mike, you can't call it the Grand Caribou Oupri. <laughs> Barney Van Hall has corrected you every time. It's an opera. Opry. I know. Try but, it. Try it. Okay, go. But it's Oprah. Try it. Oprah. <laughs> Ah, Barney Bantall is uh, going to be performing a song off his new album, The Inside Passage. He is having the Grand Caribou Opry. <laughs> Opry! <laughs> November 27th at I'm like, the Cult, if you want to oh, check it out. And uh, he is performing it. on the Six String Nation guitar right now. He's going to play the title track off this one, The Inside Passage. Here's Barney Bantall. We would leave before dawn when the seas were calm. Make Buccaneer Bay by the early morning. The long summer days, the worry was worlds away on the waters of the inside passage. Boys and girls diving for pearls in the womb like warmth of the water, then forging their love in the coal and the fire, plunging their union, kissing and steaming into the inside passage. Love came calling so quickly falling into each other forever. Immediate and timeless, baptizing the faithless in the holy waters of the inside passage. As a kid, I would read of the brave explorers' deeds and making their way around the world. And then, frozen in time, at the end of their line, in the iron grip of the Northwest Passage. Reaching their end with no way to sail for a savior to come and free them. They wrote their tones and buried them in cairns of stone, forever to guard the gates of the inside passage. My father fades out into the light. 
I wonder if he remembers Singing at the wheel As the gulls cried and reeled on the water Of the inside passage In those long summer days When worry was worlds away On the water Of the inside passage 